Shalom, la habakarium, shal yashar Allah. Peace to the elect of Israel. Started with the 144,000 elect men, 12,000 from each tribe, which consists of the so called blacks, so called Hispanics, or so called Latinos, so called Native American Indians, and you Israelite foreigners who are scattered among all other nations worldwide. Shalom to all of you. Let's start off by giving a much ado all phrases, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha Kodash, Koholo Imla, Abanawa, Alahaya Nawa, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Racha Kodash, and double honor to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone, and much due respect to you, sincere Akim, that's laboring in the works. And shalom to you believers, to the Aki and Wa'akwa, which will be your brothers and few of my sincere sisters who do subscribe to this truth. Abba Ratza, Father Willem, that this lesson is edifying and very plain upon the tables. I'm your brother Maukaya out here in Pasadena, Texas. So, uh... I was watching the brother that goes by the Bar Kabash, G Mr. Bar Kabash. Very edifying lesson. It's gonna be a response to it. I want to put my two little cents into it. First and foremost, he did a response to can women teach? Responding to your questions. Alright. Now, can a woman teach? Yes, you can teach, but don't try to teach what the prophets of Yahweh Shai are ordained to teach. Like, for example, going out to the Howards and Bowies, going out to the public places, doing lessons on the Internet, breaking down scriptures, the visions, the, the, the dark parables, like what Jacob's trouble is, what the MOTB is, warning our people of the evil times. And etc. Leave that to us. Leave that to the Israelite man. If you women want to teach, if you Israelite women want to teach something, okay, teach other Israelite women on your platform how to be a woman. Teach them what they need to do in their lot as an Israelite woman. Teach them. What the Lord requires as an Israelite woman, serve your head, which is the Israelite man. You want to serve our power, the creator of all things, Yahweh Shai, then you serve your head, your master, your Lord, the Israelite man. Teach the younger woman, teach other Israelite women how to love their husbands, how to love their man, their head. How to be submissive. Show other Israelite women who doesn't really know how to cook, but has the potential to learn quick, has the potential to learn, has the potential to tap into a, a godly woman, right? Teach them certain recipes that you know how to cook, Aqua, sister. Teach them some of the recipes you know how to how to cook. Put some of the aqua. On game, you know, put them on game, you know, show them some, show them some recipes, show them how to sew, show them how to, how to rub a Israelite man's traps, his shoulders, his back, how to make him feel at peace, teach him how to be a woman, teach him how to be a pillar of rest, is that too much to ask for, Aqua, is that too much to ask for, stay in your lane, we stay in our lane, all right? Um, uh, Low Wood and I'll leave the link in the description box So you can uh, click on it And take heed to the brother's lesson You know And you brothers can learn something from this too Alright But well, I definitely want to You know Shoot the shits I said you say You know Teach The aqua The sisters out there That's trying to Be A daughter of Zion 
whether she's an aged woman or a younger woman. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, cause you got a lot of Israelite women out there that gets confused with the word prophetess, what a prophetess is. All right. So we're going to read, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 15 verse 50 because you got a lot of women out there it's like women that has that fire to where they want to teach which is nothing wrong with that we want to teach the Lord's word but mind you this order here let all things be done in decent and in order just paraphrasing all right there's certain things that the Israelite man can teach and there's certain things that the woman can teach if that makes sense all right so for an example, right, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 20, and and Miriam, the prophetess, right, the prophetess, and Miriam, she was considered a prophetess because she was married onto Isaiah the prophet. A prophetess is a woman that's married to a prophet. To try to use a worldly Saying that may help you understand that Think of the title When you get married in the system You get what? Mr. Mrs. So for an example Mr. Rodriguez Mrs. Rodriguez Mrs. Like Mr. Mrs. You got the M R M R S Prophet Prophetess. Hopefully that makes sense. Alright. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a temporal in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and and with dancers, just uh if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Right, the point I want to get though is uh, I'm going to go into that word prophetess. Right, prophetess. Strong. Strong's H 5031. Nevia. Nevia. Now, real quick. You know, Deborah, the prophetess, is known by a lot of sisters in this truth, so they would try to they 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 get mistaken for that. Deborah was a, a prophetess because she was married to a man of Yahweh Shai named Barak, a prophet. Okay, prophetess is a woman that's married onto a prophet. Okay, we're gonna prove that. Let me get straight to the point. Um, and you notice here it's, it's, It was talking about Miriam Right And who was she? Wife of Isaiah the prophet Right Because when you go to the Strong's info To get the Strong's definition Right When you read down here Okay Let me uh When you come down here By association A prophet's Wife, prophetess. Okay, it just means you're a wife onto a prophet. So let's say, for example, I had a wife. I was dealing with a woman. I was dealing with a Israelite woman, a so-called black woman, so-called uh, Let's say you know a woman from either tribes, you know, either kingdoms, and southern kingdom, northern kingdom, right? Which me personally, I would rather deal with a northern kingdom chick, but that's a whole different story. But uh, <clears throat> Right, she will become a prophetess because she's being dealt with by a prophet. Low willing, low willing, I'm one of the prophets of Yahweh Shmuel Mashai. Okay, she will become a prophetess because she's married onto me. Right, she got she she took on my name. Okay, all right. Hopefully that makes sense. By association, a prophet's wife, prophetess. Okay. Um, and the Lord has always dealt with men directly. Okay, that's who He revealed His secrets onto. Remember the Book of Amos, 
chapter 3, verse 7, if I'm not mistaken. The Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, he will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets, not prophetess, prophets. Okay. Just paraphrase them. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 31, KJV. And ye, my flock, my flock, the flock of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, the flock of my pastor are. Are who? Men. Men, okay? And ye, my flock, the flock of my pastor, are men. And I am your God, your power, saith the Lord, Yahweh Barashim, Yahweh Shai. So I want to get a comparison here, real quick. Amos 3 and 7 says, I quoted that. I want to get this real quick. Okay, and then um, let's see. The Lord deprived her of wisdom, just paraphrasing, and I type kind of fast so, like, my spelling can be off. <laughs> okay. So now you know the difference between a prophetess and a prophet, hopefully. That you're actually sincerely taking heed to this aqua. And you to your sisters out there. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 KJV. Surely the Lord Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, will do nothing but he revealeth his secret, right? His secret counsel. He revealeth himself as, you know, who he is. How about Shmuel Shai, right? The secret council, the, 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 the deep secrets, the parables, the understandings, the breakdowns, right? He revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. It doesn't say prophetess, right? It says prophets. The Lord has always dealt with men, and in particular, Israelite men. Just to, just to be clear here, Israelite men, okay? Right, Israelite men, Hebrew Israelite men, which today so called blacks, so called Hispanics, so called Latinos, so called Native American Indians, even Israelite foreigners, Israelites who look like other nations. Okay, this is who the Lord is dealing with Israelite men. Okay, so this is who he revealed his secrets onto. So when you read Job chapter 39, verse 17, KJV, because Yahweh Bashmiahushai deprived her of wisdom, neither have he imparted to her understanding. So Yahweh Shai did not give you Israelite woman the secrets that he has revealed unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? Leave the heavy lifting when it comes to prophesying to the Israelite men. Leave that to us. All right. Leave that to us. Okay. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 3, KJV. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle. Of the Most High, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, is with men. Remember, we read Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 31, that my flock, ye and my flock, the pastor of my flock are with men, just paraphrasing. The tabernacle of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is with men, Israelite men. So-called black men, so-called Hispanic Latino men, so-called Native American Indian men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And the Most High, Yahweh Shai himself shall be with them and be their God. The tabernacle of our creator, Yahweh Shai, is with men. He's dealing with men. This is who he revealeth his deep secrets to. 
like these these, these dark sayings to Israelite men. Because how about Shah did not give you women that kind of understanding to better understand that. Okay? You have a unique role. You Israelite women, you have a role that we men can't do. And we have a role that you women can't do. There's no such thing as we being equal. All right? Because we're not equal with our head, Yahweh Shai. No, Yahweh Shai is on a whole nother level. He's above us. All right? He has a lot that we can't fulfill. All right? His lot is unique. Only he can do it. And each of us brothers got a certain lot that you women cannot do. Okay? Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. Yasha Allah, right? A prince of the Most High, Yahweh Bashmi Awashad, is like man. And then the daughter of Zion, a Nizalite woman, the woman, okay? And then children. You see the beautiful order here? Yahweh, the Most High. Yahweh Shad, the Anointed One, our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior. Yasha Allah, a prince. The princes of Yahweh Bashmi Awashai, the Israelite man, uh, the daughters of Zion, the Israelite woman, and then children of, you know, the, the children. Okay? All right? Now, if you woman, if you woman, woman want to teach, it's okay to teach. Just because the scripture goes into how it says, uh, that the woman should learn in silence with all... Uh, just paraphrasing, right? Oh, wait, wait, no. Uh, what's the other scripture? Uh, scripture would say that to, for your wives to be silenced in the church. Something along that line, just paraphrasing. Salakia. Right? It's okay to talk, speak, ask questions. Just be mindful of what you're trying to teach. For an example, the book of Titus, chapter 2. Verses 3 to 5 in the KJV. Okay. The aged woman, right? Older woman, right? Older woman. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, right? You're taking heed to different philosophies, different doctrines, and that's going to cause you to be spiritually drunk. You're all over the place. You're not stable. And then being an actual alcoholic. Be mindful of how much you're drinking. It's okay to drink. Have some wine from time to time. All right? All right? But don't be giving too much different philosophies. Don't be trying to take... You're taking heed to IUIC while simultaneously you're taking heed to GMS... While simultaneously, while you're taking heed to IUIC and GMS, you're taking heed to Sakari. Then you're taking heed to what Nicki Minaj is saying. Then you're also taking heed to what Beyonce is saying. Then you're taking heed to what Carly B is saying. And you're also taking heed to what Sexy Red is saying. What Hukihana, whatever her name is, is saying. Then you're taking heed to what Sakari is saying, what IUIC, uh, uh, BK is saying, GOCC, and what your local pastor is saying. You're going to be all over the place, man. We ain't going to be stable. Take heed to one wine, to one doctrine. The doctrine of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh You do that by just sticking to GMS, starting with our apostles, the elders, if the, the elders, apostles, bishops of Great Millstone. And the men on down that has the same spirit, the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Okay? The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And these are some examples of being teachers of good things, verse 4, that they may teach the young woman, young Israelite woman, to be sober, right? Sober in the mind, calm and collective in the spirit. So you don't be wanton. You don't be 
uh, you, you don't be a woman that lacks self-discipline, especially sexually. You just out there having sex with whoever and whatever. You lack self-discipline. Also, spiritually, you taking heed to anything, any philosophy, any doctrine out there. That they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And there's ways, there's something that a, a, a man and a woman said in, in, in some broadcasts on YouTube in the past. A woman loves a man by showing respect. And then someone else says something like, um, how like a man will rather be respected by his woman than loved. Something along that line, right? Because that's how you truly show your husband you love him when you show him reverence. You show fear, reverence. Right, reverence, deep respect and admiration of him. Okay? You have uh, uh, you have reverence for him. That's how you love your husband. You you obey him. You respect him. You obey and accept the fact that he's over you. you we're not equal. There is a such thing as you know, someone being over someone else. The Israelite man is over the Israelite woman. If you Israelite woman want some kind of peace of mind here about when it comes to rank and level, when an Israelite man has concubines, which he's allowed to, to have, right, to deal with women of other nations, you Israelite women are above the concubine. So let's say if the concubine get out of order, hey, you, you, you may get the okay from the Israelite man. To deal with her a certain way, if you know what I'm talking about, you, you may you may put the put the heathen woman in her fucking place for not reverence your head, your Lord, the Israelite man. All right, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. And there's a scripture that goes into how like just paraphrase how like the husband and wife to love each other in the fear. Of the Most High Yahweh me Shai. This paraphrase. Verse five: To be discreet, chase keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh me Shai be not blemished. G and T, right? A good news translation. In the same way, instruct. The older woman. So, for an example, this brothers, and you no, know, as of right now, the spirit is on to me to instruct even the older woman, the aged woman, to behave as women who live a holy life, a separate lifestyle. You don't live how you used to live when you was in the world. All right, you live in a, a lifestyle that uh, serves Yahweh Hashem Yahweh you're not living like the average, typical American woman, which we know is nothing but wickedness going on all right, in that lifestyle. They must not be slanderers or slaves to wine, slaves to different doctrines, philosophies, right? You really believe that someone's characteristic traits is based off of a zodiac sign. And if this person's zodiac sign doesn't match with yours and you're just not compatible and all that, all that stupid shit. Um, what else? What do they call it? The damn tarot card readers or some shit like that. Um, wacky tacky Christian doctrine, Catholic doctrine. Why well, UIC is teaching. I always, right? Don't be slaves to all and every philosophy, every doctrine, every belief, every religion, okay? If you want to be a slave to a certain wine, be a slave to the wine, the philosophy of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, which is the best wine that anyone can have, all right? They must teach what is good in order to train the younger woman, a younger Israelite woman, to love 
their husbands, and you show that by reverencing his authority, his rank, his position over you. Okay? Respect him. That's how you show love to your man. You respect him. You are obedient to him. All right? In order to train the it's like yeah, they must teach what is good. In order to train the younger woman to love their husbands and children. The average is like women that do have children, they don't care about their children. They really don't. To be self-controlled, right? Sober, self-controlled. Don't be wanton. Don't be out here being a a sucky hana, a sexy red out here. I don't do that. All right? Be a daughter of Zion, a daughter of Sarah, in the best of your ability, okay? Be holy, be set apart from the rest of these American women. To be self-controlled and pure. To be good housewives. To be good housewives. Who submit, who submit themselves to their husbands so that no one will speak evil of the message that comes from Yahweh Bashmi Shah. To be good housewives who submit. That word submit is like a kryptonite to a lot of Eve today. Accept or yield to a superior force. Or the authority or will of another person. So to accept and yield to the superior force and the authority and the will that your head, your master, Lord, the Israelite man has over you, Israelite woman. Okay. All right. Give in. Give in to him. Submit. Give in to him. I comply. All right. Cave in. Okay. Uh, and another thing too. Let's see something else you can probably teach. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is that? Uh, First Timothy. Uh, um, two, uh, nine to fifteen. I think, if I'm mistaken. Uh, the NLT is pretty good. I'm just get straight to the point. I don't want the lesson to be long, straight to the point, plain upon the tables. All right. First Timothy chapter two, verse nine through 15, New Living Translation. And I want women, for example, the Israelite woman, to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing. Not clothing that looks that makes you look like you're getting ready to go to the strip club. Or you get ready to clock in that strip club. Not dressing like, you know, you're just showing all your, you're showing more, your outfit shows more the skin than the outfit covering the skin, if that makes sense. All right. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or perils or expensive clothes. Put it like this. Just dress like how our grandmothers be dressing with them long ass dresses. It's loose. It got the, it's bright. They come in different colors. You can go to the what's this clothing store called Rainbow. You can go there and get some stuff. Alright? There's some nice I they look there's some nice looking long dresses that's very feminine. That will really catch your brother's eye. Some and you women, you know how to get creative with your attire. You can, you can make your grandmother dress look like, you know, is 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 fashionable. You know, you can probably you know throw a little bit, you know, some ornaments here and on there. You know, get creative with it, but keep it modest, keep it holy, keep it simple. All right. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. It's okay if you want to, 
you know, make your head nice, you know, put your earrings on, but just put a little bit of makeup, just a little bit, just, you don't got to overdo it, like, damn, like, just a, a little bit, you know, a, a little won't hurt, just, just a little, keep it simple, all right, but don't let that be the main reason why you will consider that to be the good works so or why a man's going to attract you, just, just based off your looks, no, 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 no. For women who claim to be devoted to the Most High, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, shall make themselves attractive by the good things they do. For an example of the good things you can make you, I'm like, I'm really trying to put you sisters on game. I'm trying to put you sisters, you aqua on game on how you can get a brother, a sincere brother. According to the scriptures, for women who claim to be devoted to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai should make themselves attractive by the good things the good things they do. For an example, the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3 through 5. Alright? Learn how to be submissive, a pillar of rest, a help me. Learn some new cooking, uh, you know, meals and dishes, you know. Right, because as an Israelite man, we love food. We love to eat. <laughs> okay, we love food. So if you know how to throw down the kitchen, uh, what's that saying they say in the world? To get to a man's heart, you get to his stomach. Something along that line. All right. Uh, let's see. In verse eleven, women should learn quietly and submissively. Right. So, you know, learn learn. Quietly and submissively So There's men out here Teaching y'all But you have a lot of Israelite women That be trying to Come back Against their brothers They're still trying to You know Find a way On how They can Justify themselves To actually teach To actually operate The lot of a prophet When clearly Brothers will break it down As plain as possible This is what a prophetess is Okay But they still got That rebellious spirit Okay, you can teach. Remember, teach the teach the woman good things, how to love their husbands, their children. All right, good housewives, keepers at home. All right, to be uh, to make yourself attracted by the good things you do. Okay, women should learn quietly and submissively. I do not let women teach men. I do not let women. Teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly. For Yahweh Bashmi Shai made Adam first, and afterward he made Eve. And and it was not Adam who was deceived by Satan. The woman was deceived, and sin was the result. And what's the ways of sin? Death. But women will be saved through childbearing, assuming they continue to live in faith, love, holiness, and modestly. Our rotters at the lesson was edifying, playing upon the tables. Hopefully a sister out there may have been edified. You receive some uh, clarification that you can teach, just teach the younger woman Good things According to the book of Titus Chapter 2 verse 3 to 5 For an example Alright When it comes to prophesying Like the dark days And all create all, You know like the, the, the deep stuff Leave that To the Israelite men Who serves Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai Alright so was, We're gonna close out By giving the much do All phrases Honor And glory to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai Ba'ashim Racha Kodas Double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone. And much due respect to you, sincere Akim, that is laboring in the works. And shalom to you believers, to the Akim Wa which will be you brothers. And few of my sincere sisters who do subscribe to this truth. Shalom.